Okay, so if you don't have a smart fridge, you know, one of those brand new fridges that has the screen on the front and all that fancy stuff, I'm going to show you how you can take this device right here and make your fridge a little bit smarter. So this is a Wi-Fi temperature and humidity sensor. Now you can use it in several places and this application I'm going to use it for is your fridge but you can also use it for your freezer and all kind of different places so why do you want to use this for your fridge or even your freezer that you have in the basement or the garage well what if your fridge or your freezer went out and you didn't know because your fridge run stop run stop run stop and unless you actually notice that the temperature is going down after stuff start melting you would never know that but this is going to monitor the temperature and let you know when the temperature gets out of range. Then it's going to send a signal to your phone to let you know that the fridge might be broken. Or even your freezer in the basement or the garage, something that you rarely go into versus the fridge. So now this device is going to enable your fridge to let you know that something is wrong and that's how you apply smartness to your refrigerator. So now let's open this up and see what's in the box. So that's the sensor right here. It's just a little rectangle box that has three holes in the front and then a battery compartment on the back. So this device is powered by two AA batteries and that's in the package. So I'm going to install those two batteries right now and then I get a little blue light flashing in front. It comes with two Velcro strip that you can use to stick it to the side of the fridge or wherever you're going to put it. But I'm not going to use these. I'm actually going to use the command strips to stick it to the side of the wall inside the fridge. Okay, so to set this up, we want to go to the app. So we're going to go to the Play Store and download the app first. It's called Tempstick. And then we're going to install that. Okay, so now that the app is installed, now we're going to click Open. Okay, so to set up these sensors, you have to follow these procedures. So first you want to put two batteries in. And then you want to go to your Wi-Fi set it and find the sensor setup. And it's going to have some numbers behind it. After that, you're going to open a web browser on your phone. What are you using? Firefox, whichever browser, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to enter 10.10.1.1. That's what you're going to put in the address bar. The same place you will put in a web address like Google or Apple or whoever website you're trying to go to. After you enter those numbers, the 10.10.1.1, and then you want to press enter to go to that actual address. Then it's going to take it to the setup page for the temp stick then once you get to the temp stick setup page then it's going to ask you to choose your Wi-Fi you're going to enter the password and then finally the last thing you're going to do is create an account and then your temp stick is ready to go so once you open the temp stick app again it's going to ask you to log into the dashboard so I'm going to go ahead and log in right now okay so now that I'm logged in I can see I got my dashboard I got alerts I got sensors I got contacts account so let's go back to the dashboard so right now the temperature is saying that is 82.4 Fahrenheit and the last time I checked the humidity it was 28.8 percent so it's not reading the temperature in the fridge right now because I still have this thing right here right in front of me so I have to put it in the fridge and give it about an hour or so to get itself used to the temperature of the fridge and then I can still monitor it and set the range that the temperature is supposed to be in. So if it goes out of that range, then it's gonna send me an alert to let me know that something is going on strange with the fridge. Okay, so I just put the temperature sensor inside the fridge. So it's gonna take a while for it to get used to the temperature and start monitoring properly. So I'm not gonna get a full reading on it yet. So let's go over the app and see what the app has to offer. So what we're looking right now is the dashboard. We don't have any readings yet, so we're gonna skip that part. On the alerts, we got alerts what we can set up. If you click on the plus alert, you can set up if the temperature go above or below and you know, you can adjust it, but we can't do anything like that yet until the temperature start reading right. So we're going to leave that one alone. We got sensors, which is the name of the sensor that we have. So we can change the name from this number that we got right here. And we're going to name this one fridge. So now it has a new name called fridge instead of that number. That way, if you buy multiple sensors, you will know which one is going off. For instance, the one in the fridge, if you have a fridge in the garage or a fridge in the basement or any other place that you have fridges or freezer, you can name them appropriately. The check-in sensitivity, you can adjust 
Now this one says you can do it every 60 minutes. That's what they recommend. You got 30 minutes and 15 minutes you can choose from. Just remember that the more readings you get is gonna affect your battery life. That's why they recommend 60. Then at the bottom it's gonna show you some stats when the system last check in the battery life. So you can see I have 100% battery life right now. Next to the sensors you got contacts. So you can add a new contact here. This is where you put your name, your phone number, or you can send the alerts to someone else. It might be a neighbor or a family member. You might be on vacation or something like that and they can come over and see what's going on with your fridge if they get the alerts. And last but not least, you have the account page. So over here, you wanna make sure you change your time zone. So I'm gonna change mine to central time zone. And you definitely want to make sure you choose the right time zone. That way you'll know when the temperature get out of range at the right time. And this is the same page you can use to update your contact information, your phone number, change your password and all that stuff. All that can be done within the app. You can also access this information online if you go to the TempStick website. It's tempstick.com and you can access a lot of this information online too. So not only can you do it from the phone or the tablet, you can also access it through the web browser. Do you even know what the proper temperature your fridge should be operating at? Well, according to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, your fridge should be operating at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below, and your freezer should be operating at zero degrees. So if you're gonna use TempStick to monitor the temperature of your fridge, I will set the alert at 45 degrees. That's what I plan on setting mine at. So now your fridge will be smart enough to alert you when the temperature go out of range. And that could be for one or two reasons. The fridge is not functioning like it should anymore or somebody left the door open. So if you're left for work or you're out on the town or even on vacation, you will know now when your fridge is not functioning because it's gonna send you that alert to let you know the temperature is out of range. And the worst thing that could happen is you're on vacation and the fridge stopped working and you won't know until you get back. But now you can alert your friends or your family or even your neighbor to go over and check the fridge because you got that notification to let you know something is not right. Or you can put them on the alert list so they can go over and check it for you, especially if you're out of cell phone range. Okay, so I've given the temperature sensor some time to sit in the fridge, at least an hour and a half, to see what the temperature is now. So now that it's reading the temperature, you can see the last check was at 8.39 p.m. and that temperature was 36.5. And it has a humidity of 25.7. Now, I haven't checked to see what the humidity should be inside the fridge, but I know the temperature is within range. So I've set my temperature alert to 45 degrees. So if it should go above that, I'm gonna get an alert to let me know that something strange is going on with the fridge. And I set it at 45 to give it a little wiggle room. I might be going in and out the fridge and the temperature might go up a little bit because you know of that interaction. And I don't want to just go off at 41. All right, so there you have it. If you want to make your refrigerator smart enough to at least alert you when it's not functioning, then go ahead and get this temp stick. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to this particular device and you can set it up to monitor any temperature of anything that you wanna monitor. It doesn't have to be your fridge. It could be your freezer, it could be your wine cellar, your basement, your attic, whatever you're trying to monitor. So go ahead and get this temperature and humidity sensor to monitor those things that you need to be monitored in a particular temperature range or humidity range. And it's gonna do the job for you. At least it will alert you and not just you, family, friends, or even your neighbor to check on those things that you're trying to monitor. Now, I would recommend that you get one for the fridge and one for the freezer if you have one, especially if it's in the garage or the basement, because you never know when that freezer might go out and because you don't go to it on a regular basis, then the stuff start melting there and then your food start going bad. So save yourself from that heartache of losing all your food because the freezer stopped working and get the temp stick to monitor the temperature and alert you when things stop working. And then you can take the appropriate action. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. If you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.